Sam Boyd Stadium, and as you can see, England lead overall in the HSBC Sevens World Series. Most recently, though, it was Australia getting the job done in Dubai. And this is how both teams line up. I'm sure Maloney joined by former New Zealand Sevens legend Carl Tanana. Who are you looking for to keep your eye on here? Oh, shorty for me. The guy in jersey number two, Charlie Hayter. He's been good since he's come on in this tournament. The angles and lines that he run has been outstanding, along with his captain, Mitchell. They've been brilliant in the back line for Australia. They need to get the ball to number seven. Cameron Clark hasn't had much build to run around with, but he is a guy that can threaten him. Well, Good morning to those taking this coverage back in Australia via Fox Sports and hello to you in the UK as well, taking it via Sky Sports. We are beaming this out, the fireworks, the whole shebang in Vegas. We're going around the world, going into 200 million homes across 121 countries. It has been an epic weekend here in Sin City. Ed Jenkins, the Aussie captain, will have to lift They've been good all bar one game where they were trounced last night by New Zealand. Yeah, come to some good form, but these guys have had to scrap and fight for everything. Two losses in their tournament so far. And well, I reckon this is going to be a close one, Sean, for mine. Both teams sort of mirror each other. One score in it. No, you're 100% right there, Carl Tanana. Ben Cruz will take care of us. The atmosphere really building here. In the desert, in the Mojave Desert, there's our finals. Overall record between these two teams, the tower tape, if you will. And Lewis Holland makes it go time in the plate final. That one ripped back. And going back to field, it was Mitchell who packs it down the park. And that'll kick right and fine touch. Yeah, interesting tactic. First time I think England have really used that from the kickoff, and they just try and release the pressure. Getting straight out of there. That's the guy who England want the ball in his hand, playing at the centre position. Run some beautiful lines. Big unit too, but Australia, first rights for possession, first chance to attack. Falavao, that's a good clean take, and standing off there is Holland, and there is Cameron Clark. That's a good flat ball across to Videv. The orange boots is Myers in the midfield. They just work it side to side. And Jenkins throws a big palm out, gets past the first tackle, just keeps trucking. Ed Jenkins is in for Australia's first. Oh, what a great set piece from Australia. It was a nice line out take. They get it wide quickly, clean set up there. That one man over, and this guy, we just saw the palm off by Ed Jenkins. Oh, and the step as well. What a strong start, and it needed to be from Australia, from one of their best, their captain. Doss it down, does Ed Jenkins, and, well, their coach will be happy with that start. Garan John. It all come down from their kick from England, kicking the ball away. Australia did that to New Zealand. They got stung just like the Aussies did there. So I've obviously learned the lesson, gone away, looked at it. That's good stuff. Holland goes up, and that's going to just fall short as Myers leapt. So got the 10. That'll give England a chance to try and strike back against Australia. It's an unusual set piece that England do too. They really slow the play down and then try and jack some pace. Here we go. That's a good line coming there from. Alex Gray, but he's gone without it once he got dropped. Yeah, Con Foley cleaning up the work in the middle there on that defensive part. You see him shaking his head, Alex Gray, but there's nothing he can do about it because he got absolutely cleaned up on the inside by the number six for Australia. And there is the England boss. Yeah, been in a few walls of that guy over the years. Simon Amor, very astute bloke when he was playing, played at the first five position in 10 with Ben Collins. Good shove coming there from England. But Australia maintained possession. Holland. Now he's clearing for Jelyadev. Having a little charge down that right channel. Really using the width here, Australia. Much 
sharper work early on as Jenkins switches to Clark. Broke the first tackle and then has the Carpenter over the top, rolling him into the turf here at Sam Boyd Stadium. Holland again, and now they go down the right side through Falavau, who gets it back to Holland. There's a one-two punch from the Aussies. Well, they're stretching the field and they're doing it quickly. It's really amazing how fast they get the ball to deck and then release it. Everyone's knowing their roles. They have a quick clean out. The halfback's there. Nice timing of the pass. Ball in front. It's a secret as well. Falabao, I like him because he has a go. Stretches it and then a nice inside ball. A good trail there from Lewis Holland. What a busy start from Holland. He's had a hand in every little bit. It's been good all weekend here in Las Vegas. And now we'll look to extend it to a 14-0 lead. Coming in from Jenny, and it is a nice conversion. So there is Lewis Holland chasing Peter Miller, the man they call Pez. He'd be watching on back on the Central Coast in New South Wales, Australia. Party, we used to call him in Party. Uh, Japan. Party, Party Miller. One of the great men, Pez Miller. Australia lead 14 0 over England. Is Myers tapping back in and just unable to get any form of possession? All but one or two passes they've strung together. Falavau ghosting at the line and now going on the switch to Jenkins, driving those big pins through contact. Jenkins. Foley rips it across to Jillian. Myers has Clark, the speedster on the outside. He won't get a chance to open up on this occasion. Holland again, standing in the tackle. Who wants to crack at this? Who wants to cart it forward? I'll have a dig. I'll have a dig, and I will go the entire distance, says Mr. Confoli. Well, England had everyone up in the line. No sweeper employed, so it was man on man. And Confoli gets the mismatch he wanted. It was. He looked up when, once he received the ball, and he saw that it was Rodwell in front of him. Here's the switch back here. Lewis Holland turns around, gives this pass to Con Foley, and there it is there. A forward on a back. Well, there's only one, one, one person who's going to win that matchup. No way that Warwick Lemurk could turn back inside. He'd already lost his balance going on the out. What a start from Australia. England kicked away possession off the kickoff and have not recovered since. Yeah, exactly. You're exactly right, Shawnee. They haven't been able to get their hands on the ball, especially from kickoff when usually they're monsters. Oh, it's some fun in the sun, I can tell you, over here in Sin City. Oh, baby. So, can England just rip a few digits off that deficit in the shadows of half time? They are great to watch when they open up. And he's a good example of that as charging away. Finding Gray with a flick pass. Oh, that is a little bit of magic. Crucial score to England in the shadows of the break. Well, Australia went long, didn't contest the kickoff. England had an uncontested take, and their big men running nice and strong. Alex Gray in Jersey 12, making huge inroads. Look at him here, nice outside in line. Takes out three defenders. Should have gone on the outside, decides to go on the end. But look at these couple of money balls. This is this one. But watch this. Charlie Hayter hitting in the nice line. Beautiful. Forget 50 shades of grey. How about 50 shades of awesome from Alex? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I really like this guy. Really, really do. Charlie Hayter. Beautiful running lines. And as you said, Sean, what a crucial time to score. Half time. Australia 21, England 7.